Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt, and it's been a month and a half since Corsair has acquired Fanatic. And as far as corporations go, it's a little bit difficult to make changes in that time frame. Both companies are, well, Corsair is massive, and Fanatic has got a lot of stuff too that they manage. So to expect any change really in this time frame is a bit unreasonable but i did want to make mention that will from boosted media had an interview with actually the ceo of corsair himself andy paul and they had i'm going to link the video somewhere here if i can because it was an incredibly enlightening conversation about the you know their thought process as to witnessing Fnatic over the past year, why it made sense to maybe acquire them, and then really delve deep into what Fnatic has got going on and what their plans are to potentially change things up. And what really got to me was throughout this conversation was just this idea, this hope that, you know, there are things looking up for Fnatic in the short to medium to even long term. So I wanted to break this video up into a couple of different parts, kind of discussing this interview and my take on what all is happening here. So the main big thing was, you know, the first part being Andy talking about his relationship actually with Thomas, the outgoing CEO of Fnatic. And this is where my respect for Andy really showed up and really, this is where I kind of had a moment where it's like, oh, this guy is for real. Throughout the interview, he had made mention that, you know, he had known Thomas for a while and had a working relationship with him. and had like a partnership where it's like, okay, what can we as, you know, Fnatic, well, we as Corsair do with Fnatic to potentially get some sim racing products to, you know, the consumers, you know, some of these peripherals, maybe there's something there. It just never seemed to really work out, but they kept a connection. And Andy was very forthright where he goes, you know, Thomas is a really cool dude where he had a vision a long time ago on wanting to bring racing to the masses and by doing so via like sim racing products. And he made dimensions like Thomas started out small scale, but throughout all of this, he was a founder. He was not a business guy in any way, shape or form. And when it came down to it is as the company grew and scaled, there are just some things that were left aside because again, Thomas is not business minded. I.e., one of the comments that was made is saying, you know, he had outright asked him how his financials were doing and Thomas was like, oh, everything's great. And he goes, okay, so what is your CFO telling you? Because I read in the news the other day that you're in debt by 70 million euros. So that is kind of the compare and contrast of CEO mindsets where Thomas is more of this wishy-washy, but then you've got Andy who is a little bit more realistic and down to earth saying like, okay, so what exactly are you doing? So to him, talk about having this personal relationship with Thomas, but then just pointing out the flaws and being like, okay, we've got problems here and telling it very diplomatically, but yet very realistically, I thought that was awesome. I hope that it didn't damage their relationship any. But to him to be very forthright about, okay, yeah, this isn't working out. Like, can you describe, like, what's going on? I thought it was pretty interesting. So as the interview goes on, they more discuss some of the, you know, Fnatic's last year and discuss kind of more of the acquisition process a little bit. But as part of... Andy being real and discussing some of the main problems with Fnatic, Will had very, maybe not nicely, is, nice isn't the right word that I'm looking for, but 
brought up the question that everybody had on their mind, which was, okay, customer service. I personally have never seen a company the size and scale of Fnatic have such, to be, to put it nicely, garbage customer service. And this isn't to put down the customer service agents that are working with Fnatic. This isn't, you know, an insult to any of them, but this is more discussing the mismanagement of the superiors above them that put in place a system that didn't scale very well, which was discussed again during this interview. So I had no idea that this was this bad. So on the flip side of things, I've been talking with a lot of my friends in our league, and it looked like that, you know, we've got Fnatic who's got lead times of easily about a month or two just to get a response to some fairly basic questions. And all of us are going, why? Like, what? what's going on? And as it was revealed during said interview, companies kind of have a few levels of customer service, if you will. Andy discussed that Corsair's got three different levels. Three. First level being is your general inquiry, which is, hey, I ordered something, where's my package? Where's my stuff? Gets into level two, which is a little bit more detailed questions, but then it gets into number three, which is high level technical support. And what it seemed at this point is Fnatic, as it was growing, set up a customer service queue. And most companies at this at Fnatic size at that time do kind of the same thing where it's, hey, you know, everything kind of goes to the same queue and we don't have that many inquiries, so we'll just kind of sort through them and then forward the requests to the relevant people within the company as they come up. COVID kind of exploded and their inquiries went wild and they couldn't catch up and suddenly you've got these high level three inquiries right next to the people that are asking where their product is. So with the mass of inquiries that they got, it just took an incredible amount of time to sort through them and then they had to forward it to the right department and then the right department had to reply and then they had to get back to the people. So then I think it was revealed that their lead times even as of recently is still over two weeks and they're starting to work on it a little bit. So the fact that they were, I believe they're getting close to about a week now for their lead times. And this is only after about a month and a half of, of ownership per se, which I think is crazy that they're able to go from two weeks to a week in about a month and a half. So that being said, it, it shows just how well Corsair is already implementing these systems, these desperately needed systems. And hopefully, you know, this starts to get sorted out where they even talked about how Fnatic's customer service is all mainly based in Germany and that works like a nine to five job. So if you want to call somebody and you're, you know, from the United States, you just can't get a hold of anybody because we're not in the right time zone. So they're they're it sounded like that they're going to start using Corsair customer support that's more twenty four seven and making it more universal, which will be nice to see. The next thing that I wanted to discuss, this one, I'm still trying to wrap my head around. In my mind, since COVID, Fnatic's product release has really suffered. It seems like that they are releasing products very frequently. And then it just seems like since COVID, it hasn't really gone anywhere per se and I will admit that since COVID we've got the new CSL line so I'll admit that and since COVID we've got the BMW M4 GT3 wheel 
like just recently we finally 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 got the Bentley wheel and of course we've got the variety of wheelbases the now DD extreme line so all of that is been good but I think I just scrapped about four products that have been released in about three years so not not great in my I take that back I think there are a couple of the really really like low in the line CSL wheels the sub 200 ones those are also released within the last two years so my thought was when they discussed you know what the future of Fnatic is is to hold I was hoping that they would discuss an increase of product releases and Andy just said you know as far as Fnatic is going from his opinion they're doing things correctly which again I don't have the full big picture so I thought that was kind of an interesting comment to say but he went on to elaborate that the Bentley wheel and the BMW M4 uh, wheel those were kind of what they're wanting to focus on in the short term and that is because Fnatic when it first started was meant for like the high-end enthusiasts basically for like the racing drivers and as you learn what they want you take those technologies and you start to trickle them down into the more affordable ranges so that being said for the short term Andy was saying that the product development speed of which that the designers and the engineers are doing, he is fine with, and that they'll continue working with the more high-end stuff, and then eventually they'll start trickling down and focusing on the more mid-range and low-range wheels. Because he goes, at the moment, you know, Fnatic when it first started, it didn't really have a whole lot of competition, but recently we've got, he name-dropped a lot of these, for example, Moza and they are in the more low end into the mid-range, mainly the mid-range product line, or product prices. So like the, you know, 300 to $700 range. And he goes, if we're releasing products in that range, we're directly competing with them and that's not what we want to do. It's just, yes, we want to have products in that range, but we don't want to focus on that, if that makes any sense. So furthermore, that doesn't mean that they aren't going to be releasing products in that range. Of course, as we just saw with the Sim Racing Expo, at the ADAC Sim Racing Expo, Fnatic is going to be releasing some products coming on up. They did briefly talk on software where they're going to incorporate all their three different, you know, the Fanalab, the Fanatec control panel, and then like the software updates they're going to come they're going to put all that into one nicely packaged software which that's going to be sweet but the cool thing that they are going to be working on that i'm excited for is that gran turismo porsche vision well gran turismo wheel and that there is going to be the CSL line, the CSL Elite line, so that's not going to be the lowest of the low, and it's not in the club sport line, so it's going to be in kind of between that, so we're all speculating that it's going to be like a $300 price tag, and I am extremely excited for that, because it just seems like that a lot of the wheels are, oops, a lot of the wheels recently have really they don't offer a whole lot of new wheels on release my thought was if you're a sim racing company like uh, Fnatic I understand why during COVID they released so many different wheelbases the CSL DD the GT DD Pro and then they started to work on the DD Extreme line but to me it's I'm hoping that Corsair notices this and maybe provides a little bit of direction to the product designing team is everybody's got their wheelbases now. I really haven't bought a Fnatic product in... Well, since I did the shifter and the handbrake. So, over four or five months, and then prior to then, 
I couldn't tell you. So if they really want to make a lot of money in my mind, is that they start focusing on making more wheels and having a, like a quarterly release of wheels. So then it's you've got people who have got their setups. I want to give Fnatic more money. I want more wheels. But there just hasn't been anything. So again, the Vision Gran Turismo Porsche wheel gives me a lot of hope that, you know, they're going to start working on that. So when that comes out, I want to do a review of that. So please stay tuned for that. That's going to be awesome. But then they also had, I think during last year's Spot 24 Hours, they had 100 limited ed like limited edition wheels that were more in the... I'm trying to think of the... It's not formula style, but they, I think they call it the endurance style wheels. That will be compatible with the podium hub and the endurance module to go with it. And they said that that little plate will be available shortly, or soon, is what they said. And that would be another one. That would be another great wheel to have, because I, as much as I like the standard GT DD Pro wheel, I want it to more... I want the wheel that I'm racing to match more what I have in my car virtually. And as I race a lot of GT3 cars, there are a lot of these endurance-style wheels that don't have this top rim or top part that I would like to race more with. And it just kind of feels weird having a circle wheel when I don't have that in game, you know? So that would be another type of wheel that would be great to have. So that all being said, with that interview, keep in mind, Andy probably could have just went to Whale at Boosted Media and said, not interested, have a good day. But he took time out of his schedule and really detailed what Fnatic went through, what they're currently going through, and what they want to do in the future. And that makes me excited to see what Fnatic is going to be in the next year or so. So that being said, let me know down in the comment section what you guys are thinking. Are you similarly excited for what Fnatic may be having in the future now that they have some proper ownership and proper direction? Some proper financing even, should I say? Or are you still going to be quite skeptical of Fnatic? And I'll be the first to say that discussing some of the recent changes with the League, you know, with the, my friends in the League, some of them are still very adamant. You know, Fnatic screwed me over in the past. They had some of the worst customer service. I'm not going to buy Fnatic again. And I'll be honest, I'm sad to hear that. But with how terrible their customer service were in the past, I don't, I don't blame my league mates for having that opinion about Fnatic. But being... I'm not going to say a Fnatic fanboy, but being an individual who only uses Fnatic products. I've had those thoughts too of, do I want to change? Maybe I want to go after Thrustmaster who is going to have a new wheelbase that's compatible with PlayStation and Gran Turismo 7. Maybe I want to go to Logic Tech. But given what Andy's thoughts were, his opinions, Give me a lot of hope that Fnatic is going to finally go in the right direction. So again, back to the point. Let me know what you all think in the comments section, if you agree or disagree. Again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Take care. Bye!